Hey guys, I just wanted to reach out to you and let you know that Surewinder is still selling amazing products. Some of you guys have been dragging your feet for whatever reason. If your shoulder hurts, do not waste time. Pull the trigger. I just bought uh, four or five of them and uh, we had two guys out. You know how much it cost me to pay for two guys being out with bad shoulders? We just pulled the trigger and we said, listen, everybody's going to have one on a truck. It's mandatory. You got to use it. Don't hesitate. Don't wait till your guys go down. It's going to cost you more. Buy a sure winner. What's up, guys? Ryan here with Torch Talk Podcast. And today we just wrapped up another sales training. We had like uh, 12, 13 people. Um, I shook things up slightly different than I normally do. We spent a ton of times on je- objections. And uh, so today I'm just gonna go around the room. I feel like these are helpful because you might be able to pick up on some of the things that they learned that you can apply to your own strategy to help you close more deals and maybe not even have to come. But we do have two more classes left, one in September, one in October, and then I'm shutting it down possibly forever, uh, definitely for at least three to six months. So if you're wanting to get in, there's gonna be the last classes. We do have a couple spots left in each. Make sure you check those out. But uh, we'll start with Tanner, right? Yes, sir. Tanner, Holter Labo Garage Doors. How's it going? Where are you guys out of? We are in Florida, Treasure Coast. Okay. Tell me a little bit about uh, what you learned and your experience. Uh, it was a fun experience, you know, something different. Uh, I've done some sales training in the past and service training in the past, stuff like that. But, um, you know, you're a pretty good cook. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> bro, what? <laughs> How so are my eggs? Breakfast sandwiches, you know. Oh, they, they were cage-free, too. Yeah, um, cage-free eggs. I don't play around, bro. Objections are all usually the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, that was the thing I was most excited about. I wanted to make sure that whatever I walked away with is something that I could bring to our other guys and make sure that everybody knew that there is always a way around yeah. it. I was happy to have you in the class as well because it's obvious that you have sales experience. Um, you're probably a little bit more experienced than most of the guys that come here any little extra thing that i can learn uh, right been in the sales service industry my whole life but for someone who's done that and been successful in sales did you take away anything from the sales ex- the sales training other than the food is amazing and <laughs> uh honestly i i did the okay. my favorite part was uh you know giving them the option uh I, i'm big on menu selling so yeah. give them the menu <laughs> And if they go with the bottom line, you know, that's okay. But walking away, as long as you're with the, okay with me re- reusing all your old parts, that's fine with me. But once they hear that, that's a no-brainer. The, yeah. No, don't reuse the old stuff. I want new stuff. Yeah, yeah. So we talked about uh, I teach language, basically English, in a different form uh, is the way I explain it. And there's many different ways you can explain things. But if you have kids – and you try to tell them something three or four different ways, you'll get different responses each way, right? You yes. Tell your wife, you tell customers, whatever. And so we want the customer to really feel exactly what they're choosing. And so when they choose like the bottom package, which is just the spring, right? Uh, or whatever's broken on the door that, uh, you know, hey, listen, we're going to be touching and tearing out these old parts. Just to get to that part. Just to get to that part. Do you want us to reuse all those parts? Those old used parts. Old parts. Right. That's, that's the key and, word. And old. by the way, they they were builder grade to begin with. Right. Um, and da, you know, Dasma holds our manufacturers to a, a ten thousand cycle minimum. Um, and if they're building builder grade doors, how many cycles do you think they built these parts for? Exactly. Probably ten thousand cycles, right? Exactly. And the spring you just think broke. The springs that broke at ten thousand cycles. The right. rollers don't have the same amount on them. The yeah. bearings. Everything's at ten thousand cycles. So. You're not going to get another 20,000. <laughs> I posed the question to you guys, do you think in-bearing plates last longer than 10,000 cycles? Everybody agreed. And then I posed another question, do in-bearing plates last 20,000 cycles? And everybody almost non, uh, unanimously agreed that they do not last 20,000 cycles uh, in good working condition. So uh, it would obviously, if you don't replace bearing plates or bearings um, between uh, the first 10,000 cycles, or with the spring change, when you got to touch them anyway, what's the point 
uh, you're gonna have to come back out probably at 15 or you know possibly they last uh, to the next one but not not in full condition like they were new right, right. Um, and so you start to see all that dust pile up on the angle iron below them and you start to see the black ring and so those are indicators that we're failing yes you know, we're starting to fail so anything else you want to share shopping cart I like to use the shopping cart my brother that was like, so brother good bro share one. it with our audience because that was a you thing um and uh, I have not heard that before and I think it's really relatable so so just like when you and your wife go to the Walmart or any grocery store you get that stupid shopping cart that always wants to pull to the left or you got one wheel that just keeps spinning and wobbling making a bunch of rattle just like your wheels you know you can upgrade them with better bearings better nylon quiet rollers that way there they're all going up and down straight instead of one dragon and the other one not such a good takeaway bro I took that one away. I'll probably implement that in my well, next you want training. You want your door to fight just as much as you want to fight that shopping cart, right. or do you want everything to roll smooth? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great. We got Derek here from Integrity Door. We talked a lot about integrity this week, right? We did. We did. So if you have a business name Integrity, that means you got to do everything with integrity, right? That's right. And you got to you got to expect your employees to do everything with integrity 100%, as well. Or you're going to get called out. Correct. You can't have integrity be your company name. And then you not do things with integrity, right? That's right. Um, That's right. So let me ask you, because I get I get a lot of questions about you know people thinking that sales is manipulative. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's it's uh, it's against their integrity. Being a man of integrity, I know you very well. You're high integrity. Your business is named Integrity. I know you do business with integrity. Did I teach anything uh, the last two days that you felt was outside out like maybe out of bounds at all? No. Not at all. Um, and actually, I, I've, I'm i from Amarillo, Texas, and I brought three guys up here to do this. Um, I've been to a couple of your other deals, and uh, I'm a member of GDU. Um, it's The whole experience has been awesome. But Good. today, uh, part of why I wanted to bring my guys up here is because I want them to understand that, that selling and asking for the sale is not is – not you know, it's not something that is a bad thing. Yeah. Because our customers, uh, we talked a little bit about this, but our customers, they call us, we show up to their house, you know, we're in branded trucks, we're in branded uniforms, and they need our help. That's yeah. that's why they've called us. So um, it's okay to go through a safety checklist. It's okay to give them recommendations. We're not trying to hard sell them or anything like yep. that, but – we're trying to make it so they don't have to call us back in four months, six right. months, something like that. So it's, I mean, I feel honestly like being integrity esque to our customers is is educating them, yeah, tell, telling them, telling them this could go wrong, and you have a choice. And yeah. we recommend this, but if you don't do it, we want you to be aware that that it's not on us that we didn't educate you that, that that's that this could happen. Right. Do you have something you wanted to add? I saw you. I wasn't sure if I wanted, you wanted me to speak on Go that. ahead, bro. Uh, so you would also agree, you know, we're not we're not just salesmen. We're, uh -huh. we're All we're doing is making the customer an educated buyer. Yeah, I mean, we're educators. We're yeah. because They're making their own decision. And, and as crazy as it sounds, and I know there's a lot of garage door professionals that listen to this, but there's also others, but we have people call in that they don't even know they have springs on their doors. Right. I mean, because my office manager will ask them, you know, if it's a torsion tube or whatever, and they're like, well, my door doesn't have springs. And it's like, no, your door has springs. Yeah. So, you know, depending on who it is, there's a fair bit of education to be done right. when we get to that house. And an educated buyer is an equipped buyer. And Correct. an equipped buyer is someone who's willing to make a decision usually because they feel comfortable with the options or the information. And when I think about companies like GDS uh, and some of the things that they do, they want to be as deceptive as possible with not educating their customer, right? As much as possible or using scare tactics like, Oh, your door's going to fall on you and you're going to die if you don't fix this and things like that. So you got some of that going on, right? Right. Um, Being equipped means having the equipment, having all your material on the truck at that time. Yeah. You give them too much time to think about it is when they're going to change their mind. Yep. hundred percent. So anything else that you learned that you felt like would be beneficial to our listeners? Yeah, I think uh, one of the one of the simplest things, and this is an old sales deal, and Ryan brought it up, but 
just answer the phone with a smile. Mm-hmm. People can people can feel it. They can hear it. Um, and then don't be afraid to ask for the sale. I mean, yeah. like I said, you're there. They have called to ask for your help, so you educate them and and ask them ask them to complete the job. Yeah. Ask them to do what they called you out there for. Yeah, and that's important. Smiles go a long way. If you guys remember the COVID era, mm-hmm. right? We all had masks on. Yep. That was miserable. It was. I love to smile. I love to look people in the eyes. I love getting a smile in response, even from strangers. Right. And I didn't even think it was possible. (laughs) Yeah, that was tough, right? Um, And so, like, the reason why I bring smiles up is because we're – listen, I'm not undermining the position of a service professional. They got one of the most difficult jobs, uh, I think, around. You got – you're dealing with traffic, you know, especially here. You're dealing with heat. Um you're dealing with uh, upset customers sometimes. You're dealing with road rage on the road with other people. Um, you got your wife banging on you to get home at a decent hour. You got your kids' stuff that you got to go to. Um, you don't know what you're walking into every single job. It, you know, good Lord, man. There's it's, a lot of variables. It's a lot of variables. That, I don't think we give these people enough credit sometimes of, like, what they accomplish. It, but at the same time, uh, we get sometimes in this position mentally where it just becomes another thing. E- each one becomes another <laughs> thing. And then what ends up happening is um, we go from, from you know, really loving it to just doing the next job and doing the next job. And when we call, uh, we talked about the call uh, when we dispatch. Um, it's super important for us to make that call, number one, yeah. rather than just dispatch. They need to hear your voice. They need to hear your smile. And, uh, you know, something I picked up when I when I sold cars was, you know, we used to take people through Chick-fil-A and Starbucks on the drive, on the test drive. And, and it, it just built so much trust. And so now when I go to people's houses, I'll tell them, hey, uh, if I'm going to be if it's a, a little bit of a drive and it's just not like around the corner, I'll say, Hey, I'm passing a Chick-fil-A and a Starbucks on the way. Would you like me to stop and get you anything? Um, also when we're talking about educating consumers and uh, enabling them to make decisions, I, I'm a very hangry person if I don't eat. Right. Yeah. And, um, and you don't want to deal with me. Like, yeah, I'm not trying to be a prick. I'm just short. And, uh, like, I'm well, just, you're ready to go. I'm eat. ready to go. Yeah, I'm ready to go eat, and you're in my way. Yeah. And so, um, you know, just offering that, I think, goes a long way. Or a tired mom who who feels like she can't make a decision because she's exhausted. We should rock the baby to sleep. Maybe maybe some <laughs> caffeine uh, for coffee or whatever from Starbucks. A little caramel macchiato, you know? I, I think the other thing to go along with that that you pointed out that, that doesn't get uh, mentioned a lot but is – if someone offers you something, don't deny them. Take it. I mean, take it. If yeah. someone says, hey, you want to water, you know, they know it's hot in that garage. Yeah. I mean, they, they're showing you empathy yeah. like we talked about. So, I mean, if someone's offering you something, even if it's a Chinese candy, just yep. take it. <laughs> like that last job. <laughs> yeah, it was hot in there too and dirty. Um, all right, my man. Braden. Yeah, Braden. Braden, introduce yourself. So my name is Braden, and I work for Integrity. Okay. And um, I, I learned a lot. I had a good experience. I'm very grateful for being able to um, do this training, and um, hopefully, I can take a lot of it and put it back out in the field. Nice. I can tell he's hungry. He's hungry, and and we've talked about what kind of where I would like for him to go, and uh, and I think he can see more now. Um, because we we do have some service professionals in our in our shop that that are, I mean they're they're just gonna be hard to to flip flop. Yeah, and and that's what he's been around since he started. He hadn't been in the garage door business before he worked for us. So what'd you do before? Um, I installed and septic tanks. Okay. And uh, sprinkler systems, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, we Which, have a septic company, and I always crack that joke with him. I think it's 
funny. So sorry for those of you guys who know I don't normally cuss on the podcast. <laughs> um, I just thought it's a good joke. Uh, I should have said crappy. It's a, it's a crappy job. Yeah. It well, it paid the bills, so that's it all that really matters. But, but as I say, I'm very fortunate to get this job. Yeah, you were knee deep in it. Oh yeah, literally, like, quite literally. <laughs> Um, I, I did, I told him, I said, I want to do a campaign around the Transformer movie. Um, and I want to do it as a deceptic con yeah. promotion. There you go. That sounds like Get a good it? drain cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I thought it was hilarious. I'm sitting here laughing for hours on it, like chuckling like two days later about it. And uh, I sent it over to our client. I was like, should we do a deceptic con uh, promotion with Transformers? And they were like, we love it. That's so awesome. anyway, I think we posted that on their Facebook. Consistency in everything, including price, reliability, quality, not just quality, but great quality control. These are things that describe Somer USA. Somer is not some startup company, not one that you need to be worried about going out of business in the near future. Somer and their family of businesses are $200 million companies. They're in over 100 countries, and they have locations in 20 countries. This is a large organization who stands behind their product and works through integrity. And there's not another company out there willing to drop what they're doing and help you out like Somer. These guys are awesome. Not only have they been loyal to the Torsion Talk podcast, they've been loyal to the technicians and the owners of the companies who install their product. In my opinion, if you're not at least offering Somer as an additional option, you're cheating yourself. Listen, first-time dealers... I've got a special for you. If you buy 10 or more Somers while supplies last, we will offer you free shipping. You have no more excuses. The prices are great. The product is amazing. Go check out Somer USA and order 10 for free shipping. So what did you take away? Is there something that you learned that you feel like is going to help you um, really, really like the, the customer, like relationship and how to, um, like talk to them a lot easier because that, that's my problem is just talking. It's, yeah. um, I it's tend to like stumble over my words and all that. What but, do you think causes that? Um, I kind of just get like nervous and, yeah. um, I can kind of read people's reactions, but then again, I can't. So I, um, I try to be very cautious about what I say. Are you like this with your friends too? Um, not really. No, not really. It's just new people. It's just a comfort, right? Yeah. But I, after I break that, that once I'm not comfortable, then I'm okay. So this should have been scary as hell for you. It, it kind of was, but <laughs> I, I didn't. I wasn't trying to show it. Yeah. No, you did good. Um, I think confidence too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and and I think situations like this, and and Ryan and I talked about it, but the. Role playing in front of your peers is one of the absolute hardest things you can do. Hundred percent, especially when it's a room full of dudes. Yeah. Well, yeah. a room but for dudes. It definitely that helped. Have though. had the objections and know the objections right. and and. But what did I say in the beginning though? Don't, don't judge. judge. Don't judge. I mean, You're next. Yeah, that's right. right. And we everybody in the room did it. Yeah, and everybody messed up. Yep. There wasn't anybody that did a perfect job. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I I think. We have to set the stage, too, as leaders in our business that, hey, we're, we're all going to try something and we're all going to fail at it and we're all going to get better from it, yeah. right? And so it's okay. This is designed to create failure, right? Right. We can't sit back and judge and make fun of each other. That's not a healthy environment. Healthy environment is like uh, offering solutions uh, in areas where we can get better. So. Uh, so talking to people is not your favorite thing as far as new people goes. Right. Well, it's not my favorite, but it's it's not really like the the worst thing, which I, I like to meet new people. And like you, like you said, that the role playing definitely helps. It's just, um, how do I word it? Like um, Uncomfortable. Right. I think, uh, I, honestly, I think if you guys have a, 
group of uh, employees at your office, you know, if you guys practice that more often, it'll be it'll you, it'll just be a rhythm. Come now. natural. It'll get a lot easier. Mm-hmm. And we we've done some of it in the past, but it helps to bring some guys to something like this, so that I mean, it's just always easier when you have someone that kind of knows what your goals are. Yeah, and they can see them and stuff like that. So when I ask these two guys to role play in front of everybody else, they're still going to squat down in their seat. Yeah. But, but they know, I mean, but they know what to expect, and they also, I mean, they know how to do it. You want to know something even more uncomfortable that works? If you don't have somebody to role play with, you do it in front of a mirror. That's even worse, but, though. Before I went, I I went to the bathroom, and I was sitting there just like, yeah, did, did you run really? around? Yes, where? That's awesome. <laughs> Just talking to myself, and I was like, yeah, I got, I got this. Just talking my way yeah. through it. The main thing is, is, like, you see people stop breathing. And, and like... You catch you, them off guard. Your breath is so important. Like, you got to breathe and stay calm. Try to control your heart rate. Mm. And, and it, you like, people have this impression, like, you're supposed to respond super fast after someone gives you an objection. You really don't. Matter of fact, um, I have a guy, um, Brad Wisson Hunt. If he's, I don't know if he ever listens. He probably never listens. Um, but somebody he knows probably listens, and so he may hear this. But sorry, Brad, if you don't agree with me. Um, but Brad is a little awkward. Uh, I remember, you know, when we were like younger, he was uh, the younger brother to one of my good friends, Sean, and. Brad was kind of a quiet kid, you know, just never really had a lot to say. And I remember uh, I was working at the dealership. I was a manager, and his mom called me and was like, hey, uh, Brad just got honorable discharge. He was a sniper in uh, South Korea. He guarded the line, and he had some nerve damage, and it was affecting his sight. And so obviously you can't, can't really be a sniper if your sight's uh, unpredictable. Mm-hmm. So – uh, she's like, he's fine. He can still see. He just doesn't have 2020 and, uh, and they require 2020. And so she's like, nothing will affect the job. Like he can perform the job hundred percent. And I'm like, you think he can sell? And she's like, he can do whatever he wants. Like mama's convinced. Right. And I knew both her boys were super smart. Yeah. The older one's a little crazy. He knows it. The younger one, he's also crazy, but, uh, they're both very smart. So Brad comes to work for me. I trained him for like a month. He became the number one salesperson uh, almost overnight. It wasn't because of my training either, by the way. Like, he actually was really good. He, he probably broke my records there. Um, and then it wasn't long. A couple years go by, and he leaves. And then he calls me and hires me at a dealership in Miami that he was a manager at. So I went to work with him. And then uh, I left and went to a software company, and then I called and hired him at the software company. And then he came in and did better than me. So he's a better salesperson than me. But the, the catch is, is that as smooth as I can be sometimes with my words and as charismatic as I may come off, he's somewhat awkward. He'll process and he'll think, and there's some quiet time. I was gonna say, there's so not a lot of quiet time response. and downtime for me, right? Like I'm quick, I'm, I'm witty, you know, like I'm, I, it rolls for me a lot cause I've just done it so much, but he is like very methodical. Every word has a purpose. I mean, every word when he's in sales. Um, and sometimes I think even if we were to do something together, he would get frustrated with me because I'll say two or three things that he would probably think is not good. And he's probably right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm talking too much. And so um, he's so good that, like, he's excelled everywhere he's been and just been promoted and moved up, and he's killing it. Um, So I think the idea of personalities having to be, like, super outgoing or quick-witted or, you know, just having to, like, constantly say something I think is wrong. There's a bad perception that that's the only type of salesperson. So I think you could fit in that role of, like, you know, just relax, slow your heart rate, um, listen, think about it for a second, and then respond. You know, it may feel awkward to some people, but that's okay, right? 
Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. As a matter of fact, most of the people who do that uh, over time that I've learned are like super intelligent people, right? Uh, and, and I'm like, okay, this guy's thinking, what's he thinking? And I'm sitting here like, and then all of a sudden he comes out with something. I'm like, dang, that was good. That was good. Uh, okay. You calculated. Know? Yeah, it's calculated, right? So um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I would also encourage you to, um, like, uh, when you're in lines, like at the grocery store or whatever, just start telling people about garage doors. It'll help. Um, it probably drives my wife crazy. She listens to the podcast. <laughs> she's me, but I, I have a tendency sometimes to just talk to random people. Mm-hmm. Um, some people like it. Some people don't like it. But uh, I love I love the thrill of meeting new people. It just it it, ju- it like rejuvenates me. It gives me energy. I feed off of it, mm-hmm. so it makes me very happy. Uh, but then once I get to know you, <laughs> you might get on my nerves. But uh, but in the grand scheme of things, I love I love meeting new people. Mm-hmm. So it's the opposite of of where you're at. But you can get it. You can develop that. Right. And I, it's not that I I don't like meeting new people. It's just a uh, Finding that like common interest, right? Yeah, right. And um, I wouldn't say it's awkward. Awkward is just a perspective. Yeah. Did you think it was awkward when Ryan was jumping up and down, getting super excited earlier? Oh no, no, <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. <laughs> Some people He's hyped. Do. Yeah, I get mm-hmm. hype in a garage. No, that's that's good. Yeah, I, I want. Knows you're passionate about fun. it. Doing like, yeah, but if he's, a customer is going to be like, "Oh, this guy's psycho." Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah. a little cuckoo. But, you know, he's happy. Like, let's yeah, go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited when I'm selling doors. Like, I have a good time, and I want my people, my my clients, to have a good time too. You know, like I try to make it fun. So we're cracking jokes and having get them fun to jump. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, like I mean, we do all kinds of stuff. We had um, I'll tell you the example of a customer uh, situation where we had a lot of fun. Uh, they had a basketball goal. And they were worried about the door, the ball bouncing and denting the door, and so they were like, you know, would the three layer door be more like uh, resistant to a dent from a basketball? And I'm like, honestly, it would make sense if that were the the answer. But if it's polystyrene, I really don't know. If it's polyurethane, you probably have a little bit, you know, because it fills the cavity and pushes up against the door. I said, but why don't I get the samples? We'll lean them up against your house and peg them with basketball. And she was like, I love that. <laughs> yeah. So we were out there for 15 minutes pegging all the different samples with a basketball. I mean, it, and it, incredibly, bro, the pan door held up actually really well. It did dent, but we were able to push it back out from the inside. Yeah. Right. So it was pretty resilient. So I was like, hey, you know, this is, uh, what do you think? You know, I'm not going to form an opinion for you. I think this is cool. That she actually called her husband out and he chunked it at one of them too. Like we had a good time, but the three layer door, it was perfectly fine. There was no issues. It was weird. Hmm. Um, so maybe it was just reinforced a little better when it leaning up against the the wall. But I love doing stuff like that, right? Uh, and if somebody was like, "Is it bulletproof?" I'm waiting for somebody to ask that. Like, <laughs> sure, right we can right go now. find <laughs> out right now. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's it. That's kind of my thing. I like to have fun. I like to try things. I do crazy stuff in garages and I want people to remember me. I want them to feel my energy and know that I love doing what I do. So a thing that I see a lot when I'm in garages with service professionals is they're stiff, you know, and it's boring and it's like going to the dentist. Um, I don't like that. I mean, I want it to be loose and fun. So, gotta be. Do you want to say anything? Do a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Joshua Cooper, and I work for Derek at uh, Integrity Overhead. And I've worked there, I want to say, going close to two oh, months yeah, now. Two months, yeah. I'm in loving it because I come from a company where things weren't so well taken care of, Integrity. Working with him, I could do it because I, I'll take pride in my job. I get excited about things. I show pictures of what I've done before, and I think it's cool. Yeah, he was talking about, which I think is great, when he's in the garage with customers, he has, like, photos of the work he's done, and he's so proud of it that he shows the customers. I mean, what a better way to show how much you love your job than to be showing off some jobs you've done. I think that's really cool. Oh, yeah. 
drives my wife nuts, but man, I I'm love sure. It. Yeah, how many of us drive around and be like, we did that door? Oh, oh yeah. all the time. Boy, I did that door. That lady's mean. You, know, <laughs> like, you got the whole story of the customer, the door. You remember that, you know, you left without the springs that day, whatever. You know, it was pretty cool how you get to drive around and do that. Yeah. So what did you take away? What's one thing that you learned? Uh, I've done more commercial for most of my career of doors. I've done some sales pretty well, pretty well but I've never been – much of a closer. I yeah. could give you prices, call the office type thing. Well, I took away is now that I know how to make a sale a little bit better, I feel like I could go out to residential and make a lot more sales. And you can do, do it in commercial cleaner. too. Well, yeah, but on commercial, a lot of people have to get this approved. They got to yeah. wait a couple of days. Let's do the same thing. It applies though, right? Yeah. Uh, who's involved in the situation? Yeah. Oh, we got to get this person. All right, can we get them on the phone? Yeah. Right? And it may feel like the same way, and it may feel like it's different, but it's still the same, right? You need to get this door fixed. Let me help you. Yeah. Can we get her on the phone? Get her on the phone. Hey, ma'am, my name's Ryan with Aaron Overhead Doors. I'm here with your maintenance manager. We're looking at door 37. Here's the problems. Uh, I know this may be a little non traditional, but. We like to help our customers get things expedited and done as quickly as possible. I don't know what your schedule's like. Is this something we can handle now, or does it have to wait? Yeah. And then she's like, well, there, we have a system and a process in place. It takes a couple of days. Be like, I respect your system and process, and I understand. Uh, what information do you need from me in order to, to do that? Mm-hmm. To make a decision. Yeah. Right? Dang, I'm sitting here as that woman. I'm sitting here like, good Lord. I've never had any door company do this with me, anybody really ever, right? right? But you get into the heart of the issue and you're getting to decision makers, right? Yeah. The guy that's showing you around is just a facilitator. Correct. He's yeah. not even making the decision. So if you're just submitting a quote, you don't even have a shot unless they just like your price because what makes you different, right? Yeah. So I think it's really good to just try to push it to the next level like we talked about. Oh, yeah, that, that makes a difference, being yeah. able to try to secure the job right then or yeah. try to get it handled where you ain't got to wait, sleep it on, sleep on it was the worst yeah. worst thing I've ever heard. Let me sleep on it, never hear from them again. Yep. So we talked a lot about overcoming objections, mm-hmm. and there's so many different ways that you can go about that, but I think so many people just lay down and are like, okay, we'll call this when you're ready. That, that was my issue. Was yeah. If if they weren't ready, I wasn't gonna push them to try to get them ready. So, well, you just I mean, from an owner's standpoint, you got to remember that they called us out there, right? Yeah, and and exactly. and they're ready for something, and you're already there, so might as let, well let's let's provide them service. Yeah, like and I a great say, one. somebody's gonna do it. Why not us? Correct. Exactly. Right. So, even even on the hard ones. Even on the hard ones. Yeah. yeah. So there's uh there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, with overcoming objections, but you can be a great salesperson, a bad closer, right? Yep. Uh, you can be a great salesperson, but not good at overcoming objections. And you can be good at overcoming objections and not a great closer, or you can be a hard closer and not a great salesperson, which typically comes off as pushy. Um, so being good at all of them, you know, sales, building value, overcoming objections and closing – and you always follow up an an objection, uh, like overcoming objection with a close, right? Talked about that. That was super difficult for everybody. I thought, yeah, yeah. right. Closing the part. Yeah. So if somebody gives you price objection, we talked about the first thing we should do is say, you know, I understand how you might feel. Uh, it, it feels expensive. Um, we do have a promotion where we take care of military first responders, teachers over sixty five. Uh, we provide them 5%. Do you qualify? And then they say, uh, no, I don't qualify for any of those. Be like, well, uh, I understand. Uh, look, I've really had a good time with, here, with you here today. I enjoy my job. This looks like a fun job for me. I'd really like to do it. May I have permission to get to work? I got the tools, everything the ready to be done. I got the parts. I can have this complete in about an hour. Yeah. Does that work for you? And, and just circle back around. And then if they say, well, I don't really know, you overcome that objection and ask again, right? But yeah. it's you're not doing it in a pushy manner. 
you're, you're literally just asking permission to do their job. And, and no one's going to tell you no usually three times. Usually. Right. First, well, like twice, I maybe. I mean, the, they called you out there for a reason. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's be persistent, be confident, and 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 show them the service that we can provide. Yep, 100%. Anything else you guys want to add? I'd like to say thanks. I mean, I feel like this and – GDU and all that kind of stuff has has opened my eyes, kind of got me excited again for the business and that's awesome. And being able to bring my guys somewhere, um, I feel like it's a treat for them and it's a treat for me when I get back. So yeah, it, it's been an improvement for our company culture, which is something I'm striving for. That's awesome. Has has an employer ever uh, flown you out or driven you out somewhere to another state? No, never, hotel? never. This is all new to me. I took you to a steakhouse last night. Oh no, yeah, we ate good too. One of the best steakhouses. Oh yeah, yeah it was like good. It. Yeah, was bare bones ain't playing around. Mm-hmm. Bro. That's no. farm to table too. Yeah, that's yeah. good stuff. Yes, sir. And the sides, yes. did y'all get the banana foster? No, we were stuffed, bro. So we got that creamy we corn. We got the cream corn. Oh it was my the god, deal. Cream corn. So oh, their good. sides are so good. So good. Uh, I, I'm a collard green guy, so I love okay. the collard greens. But it's a little bananas, out of our box. The banana Amarillo. Foster <laughs> is on point, bro. Those onion rings are good. Amazing. Yeah, Tamara mm-hmm. with the cheese. Tamara on top. told us we had to try the yeah. onion rings. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, so we good. did that too. Hundred percent. Has anybody ever flown you out or paid for you to go to another state to do training? Uh, not out of state, no. Yeah, as an employee, put well, you up in a hotel within a within a few hour radius. Okay. Um, do you go to Dave Mount? No, I actually did. Uh, I was next star certified, next star okay. training. Nice. Um, did, How did you like that? Honestly, there was a lot from that too, and it, it it's very similar to this. You know, uh, with the steps, you prepare, greet, explore, yeah. present. You know your options. You're presenting yeah, yeah. your options. And then you execute and wrap up, you know, yeah. as far as all those steps. And I'll probably always use those steps and mix them with other stuff. Um, right. Trying to keep them in that same order, it definitely makes a difference. So once you once you start skipping steps and then you try to backtrack, mm. at that point you already Dead lost in the it. Water. Already yep. lost it. 100%. Now you just seem like you don't know what you're doing. Yep, I agree. Has anybody ever flown you out, an employer? No, I Derek offered the chance to do this. I was ecstatic because it means a lot to have someone willing to take you to train you to make you do better. Hold the mic a little closer. It means a lot for someone to want to take you to train you to do better because that makes me want to go back and just implement this and do even better at my job. Yeah. I'd say I'm pretty good, but it just makes me want to do top notch even more. Yeah. So what does it show you about him? shows his high interest in he cares. greatness. Long term, right? Oh, yeah. And I talked about going back and telling your bosses, uh, your owners, how much you appreciate the investment they made because out of lost revenue of not, you not being in the field, the cost of the training, cost of hotel, cost of travel, cost of food, like it adds up. It's, it's a lot. It's not cheap. Oh, yeah. it, so, uh, I know I couldn't have done it on my own coming yeah. all the way over here doing I all know, that. I right? know, right? I think we're either going to Top Golf or Andretti's. Andretti's is the jam. Top Golf's a little cheaper. Andretti's can get expensive fast. What is Andretti's? Andretti's that golf cart. Go 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 oh go yeah, cart yeah. Place. They got a couple tracks. It's right around the corner, so a lot of people go up there. Was it? Yeah, it's not bad. And if you got more people, it's easier because you can just rent a whole like um, little booth. table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, first of all, thank you guys for uh, taking the time out of, of your uh, money making and being out in the field and investing in yourselves. Um, so, Derek, as always, I appreciate you for. Yeah, thank I mean, you. I feel like everything I throw out there, you, you're I'm always part in, of, and it means a lot, bro. The support means a ton; it really does. So, um, thank you guys for following along to the podcast. If you guys are interested in sales training or GDU, hit me up. Let me know. Um, Again, we got two more of these sales trainings. The one in September is new door sales trainings. It's slightly different. And then you have the service professional sales training because we're no longer what? 
Technicians. Service no professionals. Technicians. technicians do things on transactions. Service professionals are prepared, come to work, ready to work, and build relationship and sell and close jobs, right? So uh, if you guys want to be a service professional, sales trained by yours truly, make sure you hit me up. Thank you very much. Follow along. Be safe. Have a good day.